and welcome to this special episode of Stitch in Sweden. I'm Maria and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Stitch in Sweden. As many of you know, if you've been watching my regular videos, I have made quite a few things in the past um, yeah, year or so for um, Eloise, my daughter, and there are... I have both knitted and sewn things and I thought it would be interesting maybe for some of you to go through and kind of talk about what items I'm using most, um, what kind of surprises me in terms of things that I thought I would use more and haven't yet or um, things that I didn't think I would use and have been. Um, so yeah, this won't be my regular format of video but kind of going back and having a look at some of the things that I've made uh, so that in case you are expecting or have a baby yourself, maybe you are um, wanting to make something for someone else's baby, then uh, maybe this will just uh, give you some ideas. So just to give you a little background, we live in Stockholm, Sweden, and even though this winter has been quite mild, um, our apartment is pretty cold, and um, I mean the weather outside has been mild. We haven't had snow, which is very scary, but um, the temperature is, I would say, between 0 and 10 degrees Celsius, which is around... 32 to, I would say, 45 or so Fahrenheit um, every day. So it's not freezing cold, but it's also not very warm and it's often quite damp because it hasn't, um, because the temperatures haven't gotten really low this year, the water hasn't frozen around the city, so it's quite humid still. Eloise was born on December 23rd and she weighed 2,720 grams, I think, and that's just about six pounds, just under six pounds. Um, so just to give you an idea of her size when she was born, because I think one of the things that I thought about but didn't really actually consider quite as much was what the weather would be like when she was born and how quickly she would grow um, or grow out of things or not get to wear things because they're too um, too they're inappropriate for cold weather basically so let's just jump right in there's some knitting and some sewing um, that I have. So um, I'll start out with um, the carriers. Right now she's sitting in a Solly wrap, which is a company called Solly Baby. Um, this is a complete, it's a, it's a fabric wrap. So I didn't make this, um, but this is really what we have her in most often when we go um, just on a walk around the neighborhood or uh, to a doctor's appointment, uh, to the grocery store, that kind of thing. She doesn't really like to be in the stroller that much. Uh, she doesn't like to wake up and be in the stroller. Um, she, I don't know if, yeah. I don't think she's cold because I put lots of warm things in there for her, but I think maybe sometimes she wakes up and is just kind of alone and this carrier really keeps her nice and close to me. So the reason why I'm talking about this is because I made the uh, Sew Toot Patterns Little Pick Me Up carrier, if you remember this one. Um, and this is a, in, in contrast to this fabric, um, this jersey more stretchy fabric, not really stretchy, but yeah, soft fabric. Um, this is a woven fabric, so it's firm, stiff, um, and it has padding in it and webbing and clips and buckles. And um, this is 
also a front carrier um, but that's the one that I made so when I made that one I thought we would probably only need one carrier and um, I thought that I would carry her around in that all the time when she was born I felt that she was a little bit too small for that carrier it doesn't have a lot of neck support um, and I felt that until very recently I was worried um, because her head faces directly in towards you when you have that carrier on. Um, I sort of was more concerned about her nose getting pushed against my chest and um, not being able to breathe. In, in contrast with this carrier where she has her head off to the side and her nose is free here and I can see it really easily. So I think that the So Toots so to little pick me up carrier will be especially useful when she has just a bit more neck control and is a little bit bigger uh, because I have carried her in it and I feel good with her in it now that she is a little bit bigger but when she was first born it was um, just not not perfectly comfortable um, Um, I still would make it again, but I might make the, instead of making the smallest size for the child, I think there's a baby size and then maybe, I don't know exactly what the sizing is, but I know that there's a couple different sizes for the actual carrier. I might make one size bigger than baby because I think that for the most part we will continue to carry her in this wrap until she is too heavy for this wrap, um, which is, this wrap is for 8 to 25 pounds, which I don't know what it is in kilos right now, maybe like around 12 and a half kilos maximum, and right now she's four and a half, so we still have a ways to go for this one, um, but I think, yeah, from a practical standpoint, the So Toots carrier would be most useful for longer walks, uh, it feels more like you're wearing a backpack and kind of gets that distribution of weight on your hips and that kind of thing. So I do recommend the pattern, but it wouldn't be my um, go-to for a newborn. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about some sewing patterns. Right now she is wearing my Rhea vest and she's wearing a little pink one that um, my mom made for her um, but I brought the pattern sample to show you because yeah she's in the wrap right now uh, so here's the the Rhea this is knit in Quinson company in their sport weight which I think is ch called chickadee uh, and I really like this as a little layering piece um, as I said, it's quite cold in our apartment, and sometimes I just feel like she needs a little bit extra, but maybe not a full sweater. Especially when she's in this wrap, she gets quite warm from my body, and so I wouldn't necessarily, unless we were going outside, I wouldn't put her in a full sweater. Um, but I do feel comfortable with her having on this little vest for one little extra layer when she's in the wrap, for example. So yes, Rhea vest, uh, this is the newborn size, and she has worn that basically from when she was born. Um, yes, and I should say right now she's seven weeks old. When I do feel like she can use a bit of extra warmth, uh, like when she's not in the carrier, or if we're going out on a longer walk and it's colder outside, then I do tend to put her in a sweater. And I have two sweaters that I have been using for her and that I would use again, and I'm glad that I made them. So I have this little sweater here, which is a pattern that I made up, basically. Um, it's just a top-down raglan sweater with a uh, moss stitch. And this is in a skein of Socks Yeah from Coop Knits, and this is the Malachite color. 
I like this sweater because it has a really stretchy neckband so it easily fits over her head and it's just I like it because it's fingering weight so it's it's thin um, but it's still warm and adds that just extra yeah extra warmth so I would definitely make this again and use it regularly um, this is my Little Hearts cardigan, and I, uh, this is the updated version of the pattern. This particular one I knit back and forth, the, the new version of the pattern has both options for knitting back and forth, so like knitting flat or knitting in the round and steaking. I knit this in, uh, Yaku 416. I think it's called it's a fingering weight yarn and that's the black and then the um, hearts are knit in a unicorn tail from Madeline Tosh and I'm not sure what the color is on that but it's a nice grayish blue um, this pattern is again one of my patterns I would definitely use it again for her um, there was some sizing issues on the original which have been revised it have been fixed now um, because the neckband was too large for the larger sizes but now it should be fine and um, I would definitely knit this and use this again I think that one thing that I would change is that I would use bigger buttons because these ones are a bit tiny and they um, they don't pop off that much actually when I think about it but I always I'm worried that they're gonna pop off and I think um, I like the size of these buttons that I used on the Rhea vest so that would be something to consider maybe using larger buttons but um, this is just another nice layer layering piece it's easy to roll up the sleeves so I first started out she started wearing it when the sleeves were too long just rolled them up and um, it just extends kind of the longevity of the garment because they do grow really fast uh, now I'll tell you about where did those go here right in front of me uh, I'll tell you about a knitted project which I didn't use as much as I thought we would and what I would do differently next time so these little um, knitted tights. I love them, um, but we didn't use them very much and the reason why is because the waistband got too tight very quickly so I think she would, I probably should just take out the waistband now which is elastic um, and then put in a drawstring and she might even still be able to use them now but so the the legs are a really nice stretchy rib the feet are probably a bit too small at this point but they fit her perfectly when she could wear them but when she was the size that the waist fit her uh, the the legs themselves were a bit baggy because she had quite skinny legs when she was born and now that she has a little bit more meat on her thighs, um, she also has a wider tummy. So, um, yeah, I just feel like the waistband is too tight for her and I'm worried that it's uncomfortable. But because the rest of it is so stretchy, they really could have lasted longer, I think, if instead of using elastic in the waistband, I had used um, a ribbon or an eye cord or just some kind of drawstring instead. So in the future, if I make pants, um, which I am right now, that's what I would do. So I wasn't actually going to talk about projects that I'm knitting, but I think this is still relevant because um, one of the things that I felt was missing in her wardrobe was a warm pair of wool pants, basically, that I could that I could have as an extra layer over um, some of the cotton leggings that I made. So I'm working right now on this pair of leggings and this is a knitting for olive pattern, the lace leggings. 
and I'll talk more about these on my actual podcast. Um, this is a fingering weight yarn and I'm knitting the smallest size which is three months. I think that these will uh, fit for, I hope they'll fit for a little bit of a longer time because I will use a drawstring in the waistband and um, I'm hoping that I can use them directly now because there'll be an overlayer uh, just to add some add some warmth as I said. So this is something that I didn't expect that we would need but now um, having a winter baby I definitely could recommend some kind of knitted over garment for the whole body. So I would even, I'm not going to do it now but uh, if I have another baby in December or in the winter sometime I think that I would consider knitting a like one piece overall kind of suit um, because I find that we often have her in this little teddy bear suit which is um, not handmade and I would really like to see her in handmade things because sometimes then I have a cute little outfit that I've made and then she has to wear the teddy bear suit over it because she's too cold. So I would personally like to, um, next time I would make some kind of knitted outer garment um, or I would make this overall suit that I did make for her. Um, I would make it in a smaller size so that she could have one of these directly from when she was born. Um, this is, I think, more like a two to four month size. So I tried this on her for the first time yesterday and it's wearable, uh, especially when she's in the stroller. But it's kind of like she's just in a little sleeping bag, like her arms and legs don't reach the ends of it. But um, this is, yeah, still, this is kind of a kind of thing that she could even wear inside in our apartment because she's cold and she's small. So then I'll tell you about this one. Um, this is a pattern from Stuff and Steel which um, is a European fabric store but they have an online shop. I'm not sure if you can buy the pattern online but you can see if you can. Uh, I did the little teddy bear ears. It's lined with a jersey fabric and it has a uh, cotton quilting binding around the edge um, which is actually is the binding that I used for the quilt that I made her and it has a wool fabric like a wool kind of felt fabric on the outside and it has little ribbed cuffs so I would definitely make something like this again um, the thing is we don't use that that often just because she doesn't spend that much time in the stroller. But if I had that in a smaller size, so we haven't used it that often yet is what I want to say. Um, if we had it in a smaller size, we probably would have used that from the beginning instead of this other teddy bear suit, which is um, not something that I made. But I'm not going to make another one now because... Uh, she will grow into this one by the t before I would be able to make a smaller one. So, and this one does kind of work. Uh, yeah. So, um, let's continue with some of the projects that I've sewn. Um, I made a couple of different patterns from Brindle and Twig, which is an online pattern company that makes patterns for babies and children um, out of jersey fabric mostly or exclusively I think. So for example I have these little leggings here. These are in the newborn size and they did they were a little bit big when she was a newborn um, but she wore premature diapers when she was born so I think for like a normal size newborn these are accurate for size. Um, there is also a premature size but I didn't make any premature ones because yeah. Who knows if she would ever have gotten to wear them but I guess she would have because she was small. Um, so 
I may have made two different types of leggings for, from Brindle and Twig and I like both of them for different reasons. Here is one pair. These are the standard leggings. I think they're called leggings number two or something. You can see we're all about the stripes. Um, these have an elastic waistband and on the, the cuffs are just folded over and then stitched with a zigzag stitch. So she wears these ones right now. These are size zero to three months. They're a bit big, but I just roll up the cuffs and put her socks over them and they work out really well and will continue for continue to fit her for a while, I think. Now, these ones are newborn size. They have just the same fabric as the main body fabric um, for this kind of waistband part and then also for little cuffs on the bottom. If anybody's thinking about these patterns, making these patterns, I would do a mashup between the two because I really like the soft waistband of these pants, um, but I like the simplicity of making these ones. So instead of having these little cuffs on the bottom, which would be cute like if you were doing a contrasting fabric or something, but I, I just add an extra kind of step. So, and they're a little bit fiddly because they're so small. I think it's easier just to fold over the edge and stitch with a zigzag. So I would probably do this waistband with these cuffs and do yeah a mashup of these two leggings. Um, that would be my preference because I think that these ones will also last longer just because the waistband is stretchier and doesn't have that kind of hard band um, as the elastic ones do. But she wears both of these types and we have, I have them in a couple other sizes and fabrics and I think these will be a wardrobe staple for a long time and they're super quick to make so I will definitely recommend those. Another pattern from Randall and Twig that I made are some onesies. This is one of my favorite ones that has um, yeah, this striped fabric as the body and then this beautiful floral uh, for the sleeves and I use this fabric also on a blanket that I made for her. So a little bit about the onesies. Um, she has worn them since she was born. This is the zero to three month size. She is, has grown out of the newborn size because it doesn't fit over her head comfortably. So um, that, that was the limiting factor. The body was getting tight, but it was just fitted. It wasn't too small um, before her head outgrew, outgrew it. Uh, if I were to make these again for a newborn, I would do a crossover body type pattern, which Brindle and Twig does have. Um, because, yeah, when they're just so small, it's a little bit scary pulling things over their head all the time. And I just found that when she was small, she didn't, when she was just first born, she really didn't like to get her clothes changed because I think she would just get really cold and she just didn't have any fat on her bones. So um, just to try to limit the amount of time that she was undressed, uh, it would have been better to have the um, yeah over crossover body ones. But she still wears these and wears them regularly and I really like them. Uh, so she will continue to wear them, but I think in the future, um, for me, uh, I, again, because it's cold here and because she often is wearing multiple layers, I find that she doesn't, I don't get to see these little onesies that I made her that much. And I know that she's wearing them, but instead I would probably put my time on making leggings which go really quick and um, can be in all sorts of different fabrics and stuff and don't require extra things like binding or snaps and then I would um, knit more sweaters and knit more like over pants kind of things over leggings so I think I would 
yeah, moving forward, I would tend to prefer to just have kind of a basic standard onesie from the store. Make some cotton leggings, make some wool pants to go over, and then and knit a sweater and then make a hat. Um, just because, yeah, that's what I sort of find I think would be the most productive use of time and like most joy out of the projects that I made. Okay, uh, just a couple more projects here to share with you. Um, this little hat is a very basic beanie that I made for my friend's daughter Edith and it's just a one by one ribbed brim uh, and then stockinette stitch in stripes. I have, uh, let's see, three stripes of black, one stripe of gray, and then just a spiral decrease on the crown. Her daughter wore this a lot and uh, Eloise has also worn this quite a bit. One thing I think that I would make uh, additionally would be some small cotton hats that are this beanie style. So when we were at the hospital, they gave her a little cotton hat that kind of looks like a little um, pilot hat. You know, it has like sort of little, it's a little bonnet basically, little ear flaps that come down, but not really ear flaps, just it's a bonnet style. Um, when she was newborn, her neck was really squished up onto her chest and I mean we hardly ever saw her neck. So we didn't tie the strings from the hat and it was kind of just annoying because when she would be in her bed or something, lying down, she would move her head around and then the, the hat would always twist and the strap would somehow always end up in front of her face. So I think for the newest babies, having a beanie like this where it doesn't matter if it rotates, like it's not going to go over their face in the same way that this little strap with the ear flap would. Uh, I think this makes the most sense. Now when they get a little bit older, she's not old enough yet to pull things off, like pull the hat off her face, but pull the hat off her head. But at some point I think straps do become practical. Um, I We still put on that little cotton hat that she got from the hospital at night, um, but it does we, we end up folding up the straps because they just get in the way. I think this wool one is maybe a little bit warm. I, th I think this is just more of an outside hat or, I don't know. I just feel weird about putting this hat on for her when she's sleeping in bed. But she sometimes wears it in the apartment. I would probably make another, I like this kind of beanie is really useful and I would also make some little cotton beanies um, out of jersey fabric that she could wear inside or outside probably. So I felt like I wanted um, another option for a little hat that she could wear inside um, or outside and so I knit this pattern which is the, the little bear hat from Knitting for Olive and this pattern is currently only available in Norwegian. I was able to <laughs> translate. <laughs> I got some burps in there, huh? I was able to translate the pattern um, and knit it, but I needed some help from one of my friends who is a little better at Norwegian translations. I don't think it was super easy with just Google Translate, so um, I would suggest it is coming going to come out with the English pattern, but if you don't know Norwegian, I might wait till one of the other patterns comes out. I think it will be in a, available in a couple of different languages, but I think this pattern is um, really well constructed and uh, I'm not going to talk about the construction, I'll talk about that in my regular episode, but in terms of fit, this is really nice little hat. Uh, this is the 
I think this is the second size, not the smallest. Um, and it fits her really well right now. She wears it inside and outside. Um, and it's just a nice little warm layer. If I were to knit this again, which I definitely will be casting on the next size pretty soon, I think. Uh, I don't know if I would knit it in mohair. I really like the look of the mohair, but when she's in the wrap especially, the mohair is like up in my nose and it's not super nice for me. I think if I did do it again in mohair, I would not do the straps in mohair, the I-cord. I would just do that in like the regular yarn. So I held a uh, single ply merino silk yarn with the mohair silk. I held those two together. So I would just do the I-cord in the merino um, because that is what gets tied under her neck and also like is close to her mouth and I don't know, the fuzz is just kind of a lot. So yeah, but I think a little bonnet like this is super practical um, and it's really soft and lightweight and I just really like it. So definitely would knit that again. Um, okay, and then I have the Perfect Newborn Socks, which is a pattern from Tabby of um, the Hey Sister podcast. I made two pairs of these. Um, one was a green pair that matches, it's the malachite color that matches her little sweater. She wore these newborn socks until they didn't fit her anymore. Same with the other pair. Uh, we kind of just went back and forth between the two pair. Oops, dropped it. Um, so these are really good for those first, I don't know, two, maybe three weeks. These fit really well. But then they started to get too short in the foot. Um, I think that the leg part is still fitter. But because the foot was short, then they would just kind of easily fall off. Um, but before then they were really good, uh, especially, Ooh, someone's awake. Especially when I had these, put these on first and then put the little leggings with the cuffs on over. I think it's time for some food. One project that really um, surprised me that we use so much is the Bridgewater shawl, which is a pattern, um, I think it's patterned by Jared Flood, it's for Brooklyn Tweed anyway, it's quite an old pattern, and I made this about 10 years ago, it was one of my first kind of bigger lace projects that I made when I was still in school, um, in university, and it's a big square shawl. Uh, I never wore it as a shawl. We have had it on our couch as a blanket. Uh, actually, okay, saying that I never wore it as a shawl is maybe not totally true. I never wore it outside as a shawl, but I did kind of wear it as a cozy couch shawl uh, blanket type thing inside. Um, I knit this out of Knit Picks. Um, some kind of lace yarn that they had which was an undyed yarn and you can just see it is pilling like crazy and I have depilled it many times but I just find these pills everywhere and it kind of drives me crazy I really wish I had knit this in a different yarn when I first made it um, but I think because I wasn't sure if I was going to actually finish the project because it was so big and I was a college student and I didn't make any investment in a higher quality yarn. I don't think there's anything wrong with Knit Picks. I use, I have used it before and I will probably use it again. But for this kind of thing that's like a lot of time went into this. I don't know, looking back on it now, I wish I had picked a different yarn. I wish I had knit this in Brooklyn Tweed Loft and I'm considering knitting it again because we use it so much. So basically how we use this is fold it in half and then kind of wrap her up like a burrito 
um, and she sleeps with this wrapped up in that and then with a little duvet over her. Um, yeah, it's just really warm and it's a nice lightweight blanket because it's, it is a lace weight yarn that's knit on a, a larger needle so it's really airy and light. Um, so I don't worry about it like covering her face uh, even though I keep it away from her face but it's just it's a nice lightweight squishy layer that um, keeps her extra warm so I would knit that again in a yarn that I know uh, can withstand the test of time again this is 10 years old so but you can just see how pilly it is and it just is really another really nice thing about the lightweight yarn though is that so she puked on it because she's a baby and I would she maybe that was like around two o'clock or something and I was thinking oh no I have to wash this but what is she going to sleep with tonight because that's what we had just been using all the time so I decided okay well I'll just wash it and see um so I washed it in the sink with some uh eucalyptus wool wash and then I just hung it over our radiator um I put it through our um washing machine centrifuge cycle um so just to like wring it out and then I put it on our radiator and because it's such a thin fabric it was dry before her bedtime so uh that was really convenient um I'll talk about two last little projects. We have the mini Selbu mittens here. Um, this is a pattern on Ravelry from uh, Strickizilla, and this is a free pattern. Um, I probably would knit these again because they were really fun and just small and cute. Uh, she wears them occasionally, but not that often. Um, they're just kind of, yeah, you can just pop them over her hands really easily. But usually when she's in the stroller, she's in one of these kind of suit things and then her arms don't reach the end anyway. And if she's in this wrap, I don't feel like she needs it because her hands are usually like this and she's quite warm. So they're cute, but I probably, I mean, they're really cute. And you can have them as like a Christmas tree ornament or something afterwards. So I'm glad that I made them, but uh, in terms of like really practical things, not so much. Okay, last thing I'll just talk about really quickly is, um, yes, it is a cloth diaper. Uh, I made some, I made a couple of cloth diapers for her and we are doing a combination of cloth and disposable diapers. I purchased a, uh, it's called a G diaper and based this pattern off of that. Um, and I used the inserts for the G diaper in these, there's like a little kind of plasticky plasticky part that goes in here um, that you put the absorbing towel in and I used that I didn't I didn't make that part so I just made two of these kind of outer fabric parts and we have a couple of the G diaper ones as well so um, yeah I would probably make these again but I might make the larger size because when she was first born we uh, really used mostly the disposable diapers because you know everything is so new and she was really small <laughs> she makes so many funny noises um so yeah I think I would have made a little bit more variety of sizes because she will grow out of these ones and then I don't have the larger sizes made up um, and I'm not sure if I will be able to make them so we'll just have to see um, but I hope that gives you kind of an overview of what she's been wearing and what I kind of will think about for the future, dressing her 
and thinking about other babies and gifts for other babies and that kind of thing. So um, if you have any questions, just let me know. I will try to answer them. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me for this special episode. Bye.